All right, welcome back to uh, the Deceivers Tools. Um, last session was a hard-fought one. Um, they uh, incorrectly uh, attempted to um, open um, what appears to be some sort of locking device for a chest um, in what is known as the Green Chamber of the Shrine of Bray, or the Crypt of Bray, uh, to be more specific. Um, after defeating what seemed like dozens of these strange creatures known as... Um, uh, my brain's not working. Um, Krothic. That's the one. Krothics. Um, they've basically started to clean up the room and taken some time to rest, uh, throwing the corpses of the Krothic into the hole left um, by the dropping of the metal panels um, in the center of the floor bef right before the um, uh, chamber there. Luckily, no one fell in as a result. Um <laughs> You've rested. Um, you've taken quite a bit of time resting, uh, about eight hours of rest, um, in which some sleep was had and some trancing was done. Um, you made sure um, to uh, lock the door to the north and the door to the east to make sure it was secure as well. And um, someone during this eight hour duration has kept watch over the hole to ensure nothing um, else uh, comes from the depths below. That said, the eight hours has uh, completed. Um, you can see that Davos is kind of focused on uh, the Butcher's Bride and is kind of looking at the blade of it, um, putting it back to his belt, but then every so often pulling it back out and checking it. Um, what would you guys like to do? So, have we decided how many more vials um, are left to find? I want to say we have one left. One left. Should we go back and um, try to find it? only way we can proceed so should we put the existing vials in the thing uh and then go find the last one or just wait and put them all in at the same time i'd say wait purely just in yeah. case there's a chance one we get something wrong two if there's a timer on how quickly you've got to put them in okay i don't want to fight more of them things not <laughs> really okay so uh, I was, I don't know where, uh, the other, we have to go back, like, a couple rooms, right, to find, um, a side room to explore again. I think I remember that long hallway where we fought the undead guy. There was another direction we could have gone. Does anybody have an answer for her on that regard, or do you want me to... Okay, so as fill in, um, the path to the north, the one that you ran backwards through, uh, that path is the way that you know is the way you came from. Yeah. Uh, there is a door to the east in this chamber that you have not yeah. gone through, um, that you made sure was secure as you took your rest. It might lead to more of this crypt. There's also the hole in the ground that looks like it leads down to something. It'll be a bit of a climb. Um, which appears to have been very easy for the uh, Krothix, um due to their nature, but uh, might be a little bit more difficult uh, for you. Their hands are basic. Yeah, their hands are blades that they just shoved into the wall and climbed up. Yeah, um, and they're then, basically zerglings. Indeed, they were exactly that. Um, but yeah, um, one thing you would note about them um, as you're kind of pouring over them though, and tossing their bodies. This is specifically for Phi is that they don't appear to have been alive. They appear to have been the husks or the remnants. When they bled, they bled, but it seemed like it was very old, stale blood. It looks like whatever... Kate! <laughs> your mic... you... Sorry. Yeah, your mic being sorry. loose is kind of killing my brain. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's okay. Sorry. It's all right. Um... That said, Fi, it looks like these creatures were not alive. They were undead. <clears throat> Do we want to go to that room to the east, then? I'd say we can just, Guys. like, backtrack all the way, like, the ways that we came over. You want to backtrack all the way back to the beginning? Maybe not. Oh, no, no. I mean, do what you want. I, again, I'm, you're going to get a questioning uh, tone from me every time you say something <laughs> from here on in, because last time, I, I mean, again, I wanted to make sure that, like, you know, there was obviously... You basically told us we were wrong in a question, and... 
Yeah, but now I'm going to just ask it that no, way. No, he told so us you, I was wrong. So you continue to doubt yourself? Johnny, She's like, we can't like, hate does, any, does anybody want to stop him? Can you hear like, me? No, we're good. No, no. we're in it for a sec. Okay, that's weird. But anyways, yeah, I'm going to continue to ask you guys if you think you're going to do the thing that you're going to do, just so that you build doubt, and uh, hopefully that tempers you into good adventures. <laughs> Always is good time to bug you and ask him if he's got any oil. Uh, no. Sorry. Has anyone got any oil? Um, Kelder is, well, you guys are trying to figure out what's going on. Kelder's going to be casting Detect Magic as a ritual. Um, he keeps looking at Davos and Fi and kind of like giving Pleasant the side eye. But it looks like he's mostly checking out the Butcher's Bride and the Blade or the Sword and uh, Pleasant's Scimitar. How far back do we have to go? Do we have to backtrack before we reach a, a path we haven't explored? Because the last room. He explored this more. everything, and then the room before that, I'm not sure. Yeah, be right back to the start of this floor, which if we could clear the doorway to the right of us, we could get out into it. Yeah, yeah. so I was thinking we go to the right, or whatever the path in here is. Does it look like there's any way to shift them rocks? Shift the rocks? Yeah, that block in the doorway to the right. Well, the doorway to the east isn't blocked, it's fine. It was in the last room, because the the last room, yeah. he said, it looked like it led back to the entrance of the place, but it was covered in rubble, right? That's right. Mind, that's an idiot. I'm forgetting things. Do we go down this door to the east, to the, the east see what's in there? Worst case scenario, yeah. backtrack to the start of the floor, and go have a nose in the creepy fallen in area that we hadn't paid attention to. Mm, I don't know if we should go down there because that's where the bad guys came from. So there could be more down there. Exactly. Where there's enemies, if, there's treasure. If you inspect the door, uh, Davos kind of looks at you as you're moving over that way and says, It's already locked. I checked it before we started resting. Didn't we do that, though? Nobody checked it. Um, and nobody... No, didn't we lock it when we no. were resting? Uh oh. Well, can I, can I unlock? Can I pick it? You can attempt to, yeah. Is it is it pickable? Yeah, there's definitely like okay. a door locking mechanism to it. That there appears to be a key on it, a keyhole uh, in it. We did get the key from that skeleton guy in the last room, but I only opened the. There were two door. keys on uh, the there key ring. Two keys. Yeah. Uh, can we try one of those keys? Yeah, if you try the keys, um, it does in fact um, open, one of them uh, does in fact open the door. Looking at the keys, you notice that the heads of them have two different symbols. One of them has a, a five-sided symbol, the other one has a square. Okay. All right. Are you guys gathering yourselves up and moving into the next chamber? I want to check out these weapons first. Okay. Um, if I want to try and figure out exactly what happened to them. Sure. You take the time to cast Identify, and basically what you're gleaning is is that the auras that are present in them, from having looked at them before when you had Detect Magic up during your search travels, it appears that the auras have strengthened. They've grown brighter. Mm -hmm. uh, you also notice that um, you make an, uh, an Intelligence Arcana check. You also notice that. You notice that you're making an Intelligence Arcana check. So I can see if I can tell you other things. You also notice a, if you, you rolled a 20, right? Yeah. You also notice that there seems to be a very thin strand of silver energy that seems to be connecting the weapons in space, no matter how they move. So as Kate kind of, or I'm sorry, Pleasant has the sword on her back and is kind of moving around, looking towards the door, you notice that there's a trailing line of magic energy that connects to the sword at Fi's belt. And it seems to be trailing off of that and connecting to... They all seem to be webbed together. And then the last thing you notice is that they all seem to have web connections to the treasure chest across the pit at the feet of the statues. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, he like... You see his head just like looking around the room and then it 
his gaze goes all the way back to the treasure chest, and he kind of goes, mm-hmm. Okay, we better get going. Okay, so do you want to go through the room? Can do. Yeah, uh, you got the door open. Yeah, I, un I unlocked it with the key. Um, the treasure chest, what's it made out of, John? Uh, it looks like it's made out of stone from uh, just a cursory glance. <laughs> I'm going to give it a go with my great axe, because if it breaks, I'm not too angry now. I've got fun sword. Okay. So I'm just going to swing down on the... Yeah, make an attack roll. <laughs> Alright. You guys watch as he walks over to it, brings out the great axe, slams it down, trying to like loosen the hinges. The second the axe hits, you watch as the... Like, the, uh, the beard of the blade and the top of the blade snap off of the oh. axe and splinter the metal down the center, causing it to hang loosely on the shaft of the uh, the great axe. Um, you kind of hold it there for a second and move it, and it kind of ting, prong, tang, tangle um, off of the head of the axe. You now have a club. <laughs> oh, so you're going to drop the axe and just be like, well, fuck. <laughs> you kind of like think about it for a second and are kind of like, it's really strange this never happened. And it doesn't seem like it's physically possible. Um, Kelder, still having to detect magic up, noticed that the second the axe attempted to strike it, some kind of pulse of um, magic kind of ra wreathed the um, uh, the box. Looked like it was abjuration. Also known as warding magic. All right. So if you guys are moving to the red chamber, um, let me know. If you're moving to the black chamber backwards, uh, let me know. So red forward, black back. Red. And okay. Oh, that's the one we're missing. You guys gather yourselves and move on to the next chamber. Um, moving through the doors after they are unlocked by the door, or by the key, you see that you are in a room. Uh, the room has four pillars in it, and you can see that there's a square drawn around a red dais and a brazier. There appears to be a soft red light glowing from the center of it. To the north, there looks like there's a broken hallway that's smashed out. Based on your movement around the chambers, you assume that that leads to the southern passage that exited out of the main hall. Now that it's been broken, it doesn't look like it's traversable. Uh, to the south, it looks like there's another hallway that looks like it's been broken out as well. And there looks like there's a just rent in the wall that looks like it was burrowed through by something very large, very massive. And it looks like it descends downwards, possibly to the same um, subterranean cavern. Um, where the Crethix came out of in the first place. On each of the corners, with the exception of the bottom left corner, uh, there are two bowls uh, sitting on kind of uh, altar spaces. Um, it looks like they are uh, pretty much empty, but are movable. Um, and uh, yeah, inside of the uh, brazier in the center of the room, there is locked in its fitting a uh, substance. It looks like it is red in coloration. Yeah, I'll reach forwards and put yank the thing out. Okay. Just in case it's trapped, I've got the most hit points to. <sighs> so you take up the ruby substance and uh, put it to your person. Um, the uh, ruby substance does have a slight glow to it, not as bright as the golden substance does, which you still have, I believe, tethered to you um, as your light source. Um, but it does have a little bit of a glow. This would be like candlelight versus torchlight. I'm gonna put it on the opposite shoulder. It doesn't really magnify the uh, amount of light that you're generating, but you are looking like, I mean, if you were in a darker room, it, lo it would look like you were in a rave. Yes. Okay. So Horus is Captain Glow Sticks? Oh, yeah, there's also a door to the east. Let's check it out. All right. Uh, the door here is not locked. Um, rather, it is locked, but it's locked from this side. So if you were to unlock it on your side, the other side would have a keyhole. This side has a mechanism that allows you to turn and unlock it here. Um, <laughs> are you guys unlocking it and moving through it, or are you... I think we should. What's the worst that will happen? I'll die. Just stand behind me. You'll be fine. 
All right. If uh, the goal is to move through, you guys do so. Uh, when you enter in, you do hear a bit of a strange uh, ambiance change, um, where it was cold and just kind of you know silent. Um, in this chamber, you can hear the burbling of water. It sounds like a trickling or possibly like a soft stream kind of. If you've ever been at a creek, a uh, very similar uh, kind of ambiance. Uh, to your left, you see that there are um, prison bars um, that have been set into the wall in 15-foot intervals. And to the south, there appears to be a small passageway. It looks like the colored stones, um, the ones that are um, painted and patterned, lead onwards. And up ahead, um, in the darkness, you can see that uh, water has encroached um, from the southern wall. Um, against the uh, pathway. Uh, you can't go through the bars there. Back up. What are you doing? Stop <laughs> moving around for your rain. What are you doing? Get back. <laughs> the uh, bars are intraversible, uh, but it does look like there are things on the other side. What's the bars are they like the here? bars in the portcullis from earlier? No. Do these look like they might be weaker? No. They do look like they're rusted on the exterior because of the uh, presence of water in the chamber. Um, that's the main difference between them and the porculus bars. Also, the other difference between them and the porculus bars is it doesn't look like they are liftable or movable. They look like they're just slotted in place. Can I have a go at one of the most rusted ones with a warhammer? Give it a go. Natural 20. Yeah, you hit it really hard, put a solid dent in it. Um, at this point, you think uh, the smaller of you might be able to squeeze through. Um, but as it kind of rings out, you hear it kind of just drum all throughout the chamber. And then you hear a splish. I think I might have woken something up. Is that like a splash? Like a big splash. Shit. Whale shit. Do, do we just yeah. go backwards and lock the door? <laughs> just quietly go back through the door and lock it. <laughs> we quietly lock the door and then the monster just like plows through the wall. Oris, you look towards the darkness and kind of where the water sound came from, and all you can see in the shadows are two pinpoints of red light looking at you. I'm going to cycle through the three languages I know and just say, hello, ugly. This is what you hear in return. Oh, okay. the swamp monster, that's okay. And I'll drop the warhammer and grab the shield and sword off my pack and just do a, come on, man. All right. It, whatever it is, remains in the shadows. I think it might be chicken. The Kelder's going to move down the hallway looking for, you know, some sort of magical inscription or any sort of hidden devices. Okay. As the second person moves into the chamber, you see the pinpoints of light kind of streak to the side and then vanish into the darkness. You then hear a scraping sound. And then that's it. Watch yourself. It goes silent. It's here. Yeah, Kelder peeks in there, but he doesn't see anything because it ran away. So he's like, meh. And he just he keeps moseying around, looking. Okay. Phi, um, make a wisdom perception check. Perfect. So she rolled a natural one for those watching at home. Um, little, <laughs> little too late for you to actually kind of see it coming from the ceiling, which is about twenty-five feet high. Uh, you see a burst of shadow descend upon Calder, a massive burst of shadow, land on him, and bring down two large pincers onto his shoulders. You can no okay. longer, you can no longer see either of them. By the way. Because this mass of just lobster 
shell just stands in between you and it. So it fell from the ceiling? Yeah. Interesting. Basically, think aliens, only it's a Cthulhu monster. <laughs> what is this, a chul? It is a chul. Apparently I don't have my chul. It's so weird. Where my chul at? There he is. Hey, old buddy. Hey, old buddy. Chul's out for the summer. <laughs> Agreed. I'm going to get ready to save my little friend. All right. So... Uh, uh, uh. Alright, it'll hit with its pincer. Uh, so, advantage. And uh, it will hit. Um, it deals... What'd you roll? Uh, 23. <laughs> but yeah. a, real quick, a, real quick, so. a real quick note for shield... I will say I hit, and at that point you can decide whether or not you want to cast shield. You can't know what the number is. Because that's cheating. Anyway. Um, oh, I just realized I had my mic muted this whole time. <laughs> it snaps onto you with one of its claws, um, uh, Chad. It will actually grab Oris with the other one right over your head. And 19 hits, right? Just... Okay, so it grabs a hold of Kelder, um, dealing uh, 11 points of damage to Kelder, and it hits you, dealing 13 points of damage, Oris, with its claw. You're both grappled at this point um, during the grappling portion. You can still, you function as normal for grappling, but because it's a specific type of grapple, you cannot use your move to try and escape it. You have to take your action to try and rend yourself free of its claws. Um, and then it will attempt to tentacle... Uh, Chad. Kinky. Mm-hmm. Seen this one before. So all you need to do, uh, Chad, is make me a constitution saving throw. Not my face! Not my face! <laughs> Can I see if you punch your butthole tight enough? You said a constitution saving throw? That's it, yep. You, uh, Oris, watch as the tentacles kind of pin, like, with uh, little needle-like protrusions at the end of them, kind of stab into Kelder's neck and face. You start to see redness kind of swell in his face, and Kelder, you are effectively poisoned um, for the duration of one minute, and while you are poisoned by this effect, you are also paralyzed. You can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of your turns. Okay, I'm gonna go have a cigarette. <laughs> Alright, the Chul has initiated a surprise round. Everyone can go ahead and roll initiative at this point. Just left the door unlocked. Okay, I don't know what happened there. It should be nine. Uh, don't I just click the initiative button? Select your token, then click it. Oh. Uh, I did mine wrong. Oh, I was clicking the number. You have to click the words. Wow. Did you roll initiative for me? I did. Well, I mean, I like the 21, but uh, <laughs> I can't do anything. It's fine. <laughs> it gives you a chance to save. Again, you're not out That's of this. True. You're not out of this fight. Put me to reroll because I didn't put. You're not allowed to fight with us. That's uh, my job. That's like exactly what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> no, I was just saying that at him. Oh. Okay, I'm like the party's second string tank, okay? Alright, looks like we've got everybody on the board. Um, Kelder, you are first. Um, at the end of your turn, you will be making a constitution saving throw. If you're not there, I'll go ahead and do it for you. Not on there, because I didn't click my token before I rolled. Oh, weird. Uh, you aren't on there. What'd you get on your initiative? 15. Yeah, go have your cigarette. You are still poisoned. Uh, 
All right, so then it goes to uh, Borgu, um, looks to um, his lady, um, his charge, and moves before her, raises the axe in his hands, um, and kind of waits for uh, an order. He'll take the dodge action. All right, uh, Davos will cast a spell. Um, he's going to cast Vicious Mockery on the target. And it fails. For its next attack roll um, that it makes, it has disadvantage, and it takes two psychic damage. All right. Um, Davos basically says, yeah, well, you're just a Lovecraft knockoff. And it kind of... <laughs> sad. All right. Fine. Um, we're going to try and protect um, Kelder. The monster with uh, Toll the Dead. Oops, sorry. It's okay. It fails its saving throw, and it's taken damage, so it will take the four. All right, the bell clocks, um, and you can kind of see the necrotic energy right through um, its uh, veins. You do notice that this creature, unlike the Kruthic, appears to be alive. This one is actually a living creature. All right. Uh, Oris, um, you are currently held in its claw, kind of reaching past Kelder, and as it's kind of like tonguing and basically slopping on <laughs> Kelder's face, it moves him to the side and pulls him back towards his body and kind of leans its head towards you. What would you like to do? I'm going to take my stool, my sword, and stab the claw that's holding me. Okay, go ahead and make an attack roll. Hits. Oh. Um, seven points of damage, right? It, I forgot to say, like, can I rage? <laughs> um, yeah, I'll allow it after the attack, that's fine. You should know Yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, I forgot. Okay. Um, you hit it, um, you hit the claw, uh, and you watch as it exposes a little bit of the meat underneath the shell. It kind of splinters a bit, like, um, you know, uh, some sort of lobster or crayfish. Um, delicious looking meat. Uh, <laughs> I want to eat a lobster. Anyway, <laughs> you hit it. Um, it doesn't knock its claw off of you, though, it maintains its grip. Or is it just going to say, I think I've eaten like seven of your cousins and end his turn. And its tentacles seem to be like lifting closer to your face. Um, in fact, so close to your face, make a constitution saving throw. Success. As it kind of pins you, you kind of like flex and kind of look at it angrily. And it kind of like, its eyes narrow too. And uh, you can see that like the tentacles snap back and then kind of it squeezes harder with its claws. Um, let's see. It's actually going to drop uh, Kelder, just kind of like lazily, because it's currently dealing with a bit tougher meal. And it's just going to go full in on you with both of its pincers after it's unable to swamp you. Both attacks will hit. Uh, total of 25, so halved. Uh, looking at it, it'll be 13. And it still holds you with its claws, now holding both of your arms, kind of like squeezing and pulling at you. All right, uh, pleasant. The back of it is completely exposed. It doesn't look like it's paying attention to anything behind it. For all intents and purposes, you can consider yourself hidden. Um, it looks like it'll take a little bit of movement to get to it, but if you want to bonus action dash and bolt behind it and attack it from behind, you can, or if you want to just stay back yeah. here. Yeah, I'm gonna run up and attack it. Okay. It's quite for massive damage. <laughs> and you said it dropped me on the ground? Yeah, you are paralyzed laying on the ground um, there. Drooling. My, Drooling on my myself. My yes. And your face your face is kind of swollen too from the uh, the poison. <laughs> Alright. Um, I think I have a shellfish allergy, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, that's what the chul poison is. It's just... Uh, as you come up behind it and slash against it, you can see the scraping across the uh, uh, external plates of its armor. Um, the blade does not get through. And uh, as you do so, like the tentacles kind of like move, and you can see one red eye kind of peeking over its shoulder at you as it's like still like straining against Oris to rip him in half. All right. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Kelder. Yeah. 
<laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Borgu uh, sat, whispers over his shoulder, Milady, they need help. Should I move or stay? Yes, go ahead and protect our comrades. He bolts forward, um, standing adjacent to um, uh, Pleasant, but not attacking yet, because he had to dash to get there. Um, all right, Davos will kind of look at the situation, um, seeing that the uh, last uh, magical assault didn't do much and kind of got around the... Uh, Disadvantage on the first attack by rolling two twenties, uh, not total or not on the dice twenty total. Um, he's going to try a little bit um, of a, try a little bit of a stronger spell on it. He'll cast dissonant whispers um, on the target. It'll make a saving throw versus his DC, and it fails. Um, so it takes seven damage, and on its next turn, it needs to move away from Davos. All right, uh, five. I will. Am I with, let me see. Am I within range for inflict wounds or inflict wounds is touch? It is. And no. Um, am I allowed to use the uh, um, like a conduit for toll the dead, or is it only spells specifically? So, are you talking about for the sword? It's already in, it's already added to it. So when you cast Toll the Dead, you should see that its DC is now 16 instead of 15. Okay, so it's not something I have to... You don't have to worry about math or anything. It's already added. Okay, okay I'll just hit him with Toll the Dead then. Okay. And uh, it fails its saving throw again. It'll take uh, the one point of damage because it's taking the higher of the two dice rolls, not the higher of the, the results. Um... All right, and do you want to move up? Uh, again, you do have a decent buffer of uh, uh, Dragonborns and Kenku. <laughs> I'll go right there. Okay, and then maybe during your next turn, you might be able to move up and give them the, uh, the death grip. All right, uh, Oris, you are still grappled. Again, it is an action to relinquish yourself out of the grapple. Um, you can still attack as normal. The only thing that the grapple is doing is stopping you from moving. Okay, I'm just gonna stab it again. Same spot as last time. I'm just gonna stab it again. Um, yeah, it misses. It kind of it kind of turns its uh, head um, away and kind of blocks it as it's like it looks scared, but it doesn't look like it's scared of you, the Kenku, or the currently laying on the floor unconscious blonde elf. It looks like it's scared of someone further back, possibly Davos. Um, but yeah, as it's uh, missed by you, it still holds on to you in its claw and kind of like looks over its shoulder and then kind of books it away from you. Um, Borgu and um, uh, uh, Pleasant can make opportunity attacks as it moves. Um, I think it goes one more square. Or no, it goes a few more squares. Hold on. And then... Uh, if you would so kindly, Lewis, put yourself in the same position in your adjacency to it. Um, basically, you just move to the front of it. Um, so yeah, um, Kate, and uh, you can go ahead and make an opportunity attack against it. So just make an attack roll. What did you get on the result? Uh, I don't. I can't. I don't know how to read this. It's the first. What was it? The big dice is 19 and 7? I don't know. It says... So, yeah, it's uh, 26 is the attack roll's result, the first one. And then oh, you yeah. deal 15 points of damage because it would have been a sneak attack. Okay? Because you didn't sneak attack during your turn. You missed. Oh, I see. Okay. So you kind of scratch it the first time, and as it starts to run away in fear, you kind of slash at its uh, hamstring, and you watch as a bit of, you know, blood, uh, pinkish color kind of comes from its ankle. Mm -hmm. Um, and then Borgu slams into the back of it as well, and you notice he tears a pretty big chunk out of the plate, uh, exposing a pretty wounded area that's now bleeding pretty heavily um, with his great axe. 
and it moves over to there. And let me just make sure Dissonant Whispers, I don't think it stops me from still taking actions. Double checking. No, I can still take actions. I just have to move during my turn. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and just continue trying to chew up this man. All right, uh, for flavor, it kind of pulls you to the side, like turning its attention back behind it as well, and slams you up against the uh, bars uh, behind you and just starts pressing you. Like you can feel the thumbs of its claws kind of digging into your shoulders and the back ends of them kind of pulling at the tops of your shoulders as well. Um, it, it's kind of opening up too, like as it's putting pressure on you, it's opening up the wounds that closed from the Kruthic blades and they're kind of like, like blistering and popping open as it's pressing you against it. You take a total of 20, so half would be 10. And it'll attempt to tentacle you again. I need another con saving throw. <laughs> You've got a bunch of like small little pecks from its uh, love kisses, but it doesn't seem to be uh, <laughs> causing you to, to swoon. Um, all right. Um, Always in his way, just go, just go shout. If you wanted a kiss, all you had to do was ask your bar. <laughs> uh, Pleasant, you're pretty close to it, but it did move kind of past your normal movement. You'll need to dash again to get close to it again, um, uh, if you'd like. But it doesn't. Can I dash? Um, can I dash and try to attack its arm? You said it's like tendons exposed. are kind of exposed. Yeah. Can I aim for those instead of his? Other yeah, all out. Parts? Go ahead and move adjacent to it, um, and then uh, make an attack roll. <laughs> All right. As you swing at that spot, it's it's looking at you now. It's not turned away from you, and it kind of turns its like side and kind of catches your blade with its uh, sh shoulder, um, like metal sh or shoulder chitin. Yeah. Make a roll a twenty sided dice for me. You can do that by clicking on the toolbar and just picking the twenty sided dice. Oh. Yeah. So it hits against that. That was almost 19. You watch as the blade, sh like as you jump up to swing at that area and kind of come around, you watch as the blade streaks off of it and bounces high and clips Oris right in the top of his head. Um, Sorry, bud. Oris, you take uh, 15 points of damage or 16 points of damage and you have it. So eight. I tried to help. As grandmother cuts across the top of your head. She rolled a oh, one. Yes. On her fumble saving throw, by the way, people watching at home, which is rules I throw in my game. Anyway. Oh, this ain't looking great, guys. Mother <laughs> <laughs> kind of raises her hand <laughs> to her face, and then Elvish is like, oh, I'm so sorry, and you're like, I don't know what you're saying! <laughs> if I was, wasn't was raging, I'd be dead. <laughs> uh, Kelder, um, go ahead and make another saving throw for me, my buddy. There was an attempt. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Chad. <laughs> um, Borgu will double move and get adjacent to both of you two and kind of get in between and kind of start like trying to body in on the uh, the creature and get its attention. Uh, Davos, kind of uh, a bit disturbed, kind of moves adjacent to um, Vi um, and he will cast a bigger, bigger spell. Seeing that this is serious business, does anybody have an EpiPen? <laughs> you realize that if all of survives this, he is going to just religiously shellfish for like the next 12 weeks. Like, just completely, it will be crustaceans only. Just out of spite. We can harvest his tasty meat. <laughs> Alright. Um, as it kind of like uh, says that you watch as Davos gets next to you, uh, Fi, and kind of starts moving his hands and kind of like moving them about, um, you notice in the creature's eyes, Oris, it kind of becomes very afraid and kind of like starts looking over in that direction again. Um, and blood starts to kind of seep out of the red eyes, which you notice aren't like glowing. They just have kind of like the refractory kind of um, uh, cat's eyes type things, but they are red in color. Um, but it starts bleeding out of its eyes, um, which is a bit weird. Um, and you can also see that the shell's kind of cracking around the brain area. Um, it's basically like if a lobster was about to scanners. Um, 
<laughs> if that puts a mental image. Nobody, did anybody watch Scanners? No? Okay, moving on. <laughs> I know. I know. That's a little more right. time. Fair enough. Bye. Um, okay. How far can I move? 30 feet, and you can dash as an action if you want, but you probably want to cast spells. I wanted to, um, healing words, Horus, I don't know. You need to be within 60 feet of him. You are currently uh, just outside of that, so you'd want to move okay. up to, like, here-ish, and then you could pop him. A really bad sense of distance, so... It's okay. If you ever need to figure out what the distance is, you can always, uh, on the toolbar on the left, there's like a circle with like a little ruler symbol in it. You can select that and move it around. Cool. And then, healing word. Alright. And last time, uh, your spells were weird, so if you just want to roll a d4, or no, it works this time. Great. Um, <laughs> perfect. Get six back. Lewis. All right, um, and then you still have an action if you want to toll the dead or cast another cantrip. You can. Yeah, I'm gonna toll the dead. And I can't make a wisdom saving throw to save my life. It'll take five points of necrotic damage. Um, again, the uh, necrotic energy kind of seeping through um, its body as the bell clunks above it. Uh, Oris. I'm just mash it in the face of it closely. Okay. If I'm gonna die, I'm taking the bastard with me. Fair. Um, as you kind of like, ah, and kind of like pull yourself to the side, trying to get a cut at uh, the neck area, it kind of raises um, its claws up, causing you to kind of like gesticulate and not swing the weapon the way you wanted to. Um, you're in a pretty bad, pretty bad way. Um, it's going to uh, put the tentacles on you again. Uh, give me another constitution saving throw. Right. It, it annoyed, just absolutely annoyed. Tentacles still holding on to you as you're still like moving inside of its grasp. Um, it just pulls uh, your meat um, from side to side. And uh, it only pulls enough to do seven points of damage. Um, but just like kind of renting you. Um, it drops you as well with one hit point. Um, you are prone if you want to be, or you can be on your knees if you want to not fall prone as it drops you. I'm gonna land on my knees and spit in its face. All right, almost not really understanding that as a um, you know social gesture that signs disrespect. Uh, it kind of turns its attention to away from what it thinks is dead or should be dead based on the huge gash on one of your sides. The other side, it kind of slipped loosely. But there is definitely a large just claw cut on your, let's say, left shoulder. Um, it turns its attention to Borgu and um, uh, Pleasant. <clears throat> All right. Pleasant, you're up. Um, you do not have advantage on your attack rolls, but you do have Borgu next to you, so you'll have sneak attack if you hit. Can I use my dagger to stab it in the eye? Um, so your sword's better for it, but you can pull uh, your you can pull your I dagger like this, and attack with I both. Like scimitar wouldn't be good for stabbing. Yeah, I'll do both. Whatever. Yep. So if you want to uh, make a so you'll make a regular da uh, scimitar attack as your primary weapon, and then you'll make a offhand dagger attack, which I'll explain how that works. Okay. That one hits, and then just click the dagger attack. It won't have sneak attack on this one. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. Um. All right. Okay, so what happens is, is you kind of slash out the throat, um, and a huge cascade of like this pinkish blood just starts spilling out from it. Um, as you do so, and are like basically just doused by it, you kind of jump up into the air, stepping onto its shoulder, and bringing the dagger up to kind of stab it in the eye. And just as you're about to do that, it kind of, and like throttles to the side. You hit nothing but armor. The dagger kind of glints off the side of it and flips up into the air. Um, roll a d100. Please, what well, Or no, d20, 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 roll a d20. Um, so is 100 a thing? Yeah, it is. Oh, but roll... I rolled two of them by accident. It's okay. The first one is enough. Okay, so um, you watch as the dagger flies up into the air, hits Kelder <laughs> in the head. <laughs> or not Kelder, sorry, hits, uh, hits, um, uh, why is my brain not working? Oris in the head, causing him to fall prone. 
Sorry, my dude. Just you rolled a five. one and then you rolled a two. I can't. I rolled a two and a three. So it did no damage. No, it, it did enough damage to deal one damage to a raging target. Oh, I'm unconscious then. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, I think he's gonna go down with stupid bird. <laughs> Just the uh, you know what else falls down though? The chul, as it just chokes on its own uh, fetid blood and falls to the ground, dying. All right, we're still in initiative order because we have a dying player character, Kelder. At, at the end of your turn, go ahead and make a saving throw. This is the fourth one of yours, so you have about six more to go before you actually just get up on your own. <sighs> six more, you know? Did you get it? What did you? A roll? double crit. All right. Well, <laughs> you are destined not to be laying on the ground anymore. He jumps. He just like he just. He just goes from being completely still and paralyzed to just like leaping right to his feet and turns right around like he's gonna fuck this thing up and it's completely. But <laughs> as you do so and are kind of like ogling about, you do notice that there's like a lot of wetness on your chin from your own drool. Um, <laughs> it's like someone who is having like a hardcore power nap just like suddenly just like jolted awake. Borgu has got nothing to do. Um, is actually kind of pausing out. Um, I'm assuming that this is going to go to Fi and she's going to cast Healing Word. Am I right? Um, you know that Barbarian's loaded with healing potions unless he drank them all. Stephanie, are you... I think he did. You're going to heal him again? Okay, cool. So when you heal a dying creature, you actually um, do max, so it'll be nine hit points to him. Grave, grave Domain. Right. keep forgetting that you pulled that eight times. But. No worries. You'll eventually get it. It's cool. Um, so, yeah, completed. Um, looks like you've defeated the Chul. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, open it up to uh, just exploratory mode. Um, the water looks like it starts at a depth of about three feet in the lowest portion. And it looks like it deepens out to a much deeper depth. It looks like there's a slant to the stone that kind of cascades the uh, tiles down a bit like a staircase into the water. Um, also looking at the uh, water to the south, it does look like there are holes in the wall um, that uh, look like they have access tunnels into this chamber from there. Uh, looks like there might be some kind of uh, uh, area over here um, beside the water. And you can see that there are three pillars um, over in this general direction, if you want to go check those out. I kept thinking you were saying jewel, like this vaping lobster thing <laughs> or something. Oh, that would have been dope. Um, this like super hip each tentac hip lobster. Each tentacle has like a, a vape in it, and it's like different flavors, <laughs> so you can just swap between. Oh, uh, if, if that's not a thing, I need to make it. Uh, Does the bird look heavy? Um, No, and again, um, we've... we've talked about this she has hollow bones like as most birds do so she doesn't weigh as much as i mean if she were the same size yeah, good are you gonna eat me or is he gonna grab the bird and throw her as far as he can into the water <laughs> no just make a strength a athletics slow... make a strength athletics check and uh kate make a dexterity acrobatics check to avoid being thrown <laughs> 23 on the first result there oh Where's, uh... Acrobatics at the top of the skills. Oh. What? Well, close, but he does manage to get a hold of you and toss you into the water just a little bit. Um, and you kind of splash into the water, annoyed. It's not like the water from before in the other chambers where it was like oily and oily. Um, nasty. This actually appears pretty fresh, but it's... Um, it has a certain earthy tone to it, uh, like it's an underwater um, reservoir. Yum. Or under Earth Reservoir. Of course it's underwater, uh. it's water. <sighs> Alright. Um, Chad, um, be like here. <laughs> when you get back to consciousness, there are a couple of points of um, exploratory nonsense. Let me go ahead and refine the list so we can just quickly cover them. Uh, there are the, uh, the prison cells to the north. There are the pillars and presumably another brazier to the uh, east. There's the alcove to the southwest. Uh, there's a very, uh, very first small hallway that divoted off of the main entryway, um, and uh, yeah, there are the tunnels that lead deeper into the earth underwater. We go east. I'm asking Chad, what's he doing? I'm gonna step over the chul 
No, you're not. <laughs> that thing's really massive. Unless you're climbing up, up the top of it and then walking. Fine, I'll go around it. it. Okay. I'll go around it. Fair enough. I'm, I'm looking inside all these cells. I don't see anything. Yeah. So what you can see is that there appear to be desks at each of them. Um, and uh, it looks like there are books inside each of the cells, like a small little library in each. Um, from what you can tell, too, there's a lot of dust um, in, like, piles um, at the seats, uh, basically, inside of the chair and at the floor uh, of the chair. Interesting. Um, so, so far we haven't found any sort of mechanism or anything to open these? Correct. Okay, then Kelder's going to keep... They did make a hole in the f one on the far left that looked like it was big enough to like maybe fit the smaller of the group. So possibly yourself, because you're pretty nimble and lithe, right? You're not a bigger... Yep. Yep, and then uh, Pleasant probably could fit. Um, I'm busy. But she's doing... Okay. Something. Then yeah, Kelder will walk back over here and try to squeeze through. I'll get to you here in a second. Um, and then uh, Stephanie, what is Phi doing while this is all going on? Um, you said that there was a, potentially another Brazier. Yeah. Um, I yeah. wanted to do that, but I don't want to separate from the group yet. Okay. Well, it's all the way to the west. It's not too far away from where Oris is by the Chul, and you will see that it is a three-pillared, um, white diest um, brazier. And it looks like there is a substance inside, but it's not glowing. I go over and investigate. Okay. You kind of march through the water swimming a little bit to kind of get to a it's about four or five feet deep uh making your way out to the dais crawl up onto it and uh you would see that there is indeed a substance inside uh the substance inside is kind of a creamy milk color um and it appears to be a white colored substance i saved this one for last because i'm assuming it's going to get the most jokes um <laughs> but <laughs> moving on <laughs> So we've just fought a white, we've just fought a tentacle monster, and now there's a white creamy substance nearby. That's usually <laughs> how Tentai finishes, yeah. I mean, what? What? <laughs> I don't know there what you're go. talking about. But anyways, um, that's actually not over here. Hold on, let me grab you. Um, bam. No, you're over to the right now, um, Stephanie. Okay, and then you're swimming for the little alcove, um, Kate. You're muted. Are there two kind of alcoves? Like, is there one like here? How well, do the in the in the water, there are tunnels that lead under the the water oh, okay. and into the earth. You presume that's how this thing even got in here in the first place. And okay. then there's this alcove over here that looks like it actually goes to shore. If you go over that direction, you'll see that there's a bunch of broken rubble. Looks like a treasure chest. Looks like several dead people. Um, some of them uh, different colors than you're used to seeing people. Um, and what I mean by that is, is um, it oh, looks like over here. Yeah, it looks like there are two um, elves with like ebony, like onyx skin. It almost looks like uh, like black stone. Um, and then there are two smaller, you assume gnomes uh, that look like they too are um, of a darker skin variety. You might be kind of um, uh, familiar with the fact that uh, the, um, there are creatures known as the drow. Um, they are not in this campaign setting like drow and other campaign settings where they're evil, maniacal, weird, matriarchal, crazy people. They are matriarchal, but they typically reserve themselves to underground societies that focus on entering into dream states. Um, but that said, um, you would have heard of uh, dark elves before. Um, and it looks like they're all kind of laying dead in what appears to be some sort of nest. You see what appear to be three eggs that are kind of festooned and kind of pinioned to the ground by these strange kind of like tentacles. Um, oh, I love eggs. And uh, there is so three eggs, treasure chest, four dead bodies, two drow, one or two spurf niblin, and um, that's it. Yeah. What do you want to do first? Can I um, can I pick the lock on the chest? Chest is unlocked. Oh, um, it's unlocked. Yeah. Uh, can I peek inside? Sure. Inside, it looks like there's a bunch of gold coins. Um, they look like they're of an older um, era. Um, yeah. Can I fit all three eggs in my bag, too? 
you can't even get them off the floor. Oh, they're like yeah. With the tentacles, they're like stuck on there. John, I thought for sure you were gonna hit her with a mimic. In hindsight, that's a perfect idea, but <laughs> they were held. They're like held down by the tentacles, though. Correct. Can I? Can I just like sit on it and chill for a bit while I dry off? The egg. Yeah, I want to sit on I, the egg. Oh, you're having like a motherly moment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bird. I know. Wasn't the chicken. I get it. I got it. I understand. I fully get it. Um, the uh, the dead bodies do have itemry on them. Um, the uh, yeah, I want to leave those. The drow elves. Were there? Um, two hundred and fifty gold pieces. Okay. It's going to take some time to kind of gather that up, and it is an amount of weight that's uh, a bit heavy. Um, but when you kind of check everything out, uh, the two drow had um, holy symbols, and um, the uh, let's see, the Swerf Niblin both had um, what appear to be um, uh, miner's tools, two sets of miner's tools. Um, uh, I don't want the miner's tools. What are the holy symbols? Uh, the symbol on it appears to be some sort of spider, uh, kind of set against uh, a bunch of ornate kind of green stone. Um, is it like a book? Like a, like, or is it's it like, like a holy symbol, like a, a necklace. Oh, like it's, okay. And then are they both the same? Yeah, they're basically, they look like they were manufactured by the same um, craftsman. Okay, I'm going to put those on like chains and then sit on the eggs. Okay. Um, all right. <laughs> And then, Oris, you go to help uh, Fi out, look like? Uh, no, I want to go into the water as quietly as I can. <laughs> as quiet as I can, swim up behind Fi under the water, reach up, grab her leg, and yank her off the platform. <laughs> she notices you um, Damn. immediately <laughs> and kind of like just doesn't allow that to happen because your <laughs> stealth is garbage and her passive perception is high enough to stop shenanigans. Kelder, are you still there, Chet? Oh man. There we go. Yeah, I'm here. You go into the uh, small chamber. You see the dust. It looks like it smells... Um, if you've ever had your teeth worked on and they've drilled against your you know, teeth and it smells like bone in your face. Bone from, dust? Yeah, it smells like bone dust uh, that's uh, laid out on the ground there. The uh, bookshelves look like they have very poorly drafted manuscripts, and most of it is the same sentences over and over again um, in uh, Elvish. Um, strangely, it looks like someone might be pra might have been practicing to write Elvish. Kate, What's the sentence say? Your ambient noise keeps jumping in. It's really weird. Thanks. Um, it's really weird. Well, whatever. Anyways, the um, books are basically just. It looks like tutorials. Um, like someone would who's practicing to write Elvish would be penning. And it looks like the desks have um, similar papers um, laid out that look like they could be easily put into books and set up. It looks like whoever was in here was forced to continue writing for a long, long time. What's the sentence say? Yeah, it's it's just inconsequential nonsense. Like um, uh, the I'm trying to think of the baseline like text font like thing. the quick brown fox jumped yeah. over the lazy dog or whatever yeah whatever that that thing it's that and nonsense like that it's like bart writing on the chalkboard right it's just like bart writing on the chalkboard except someone was forced to do it ad infinum um and uh has been left here to become nothing more than dust okay so none of the books look remarkable <clears throat> correct and there's nothing else of really any interest or value in The only thing that would appear to be of interest or value is the ink pots and the pens. Um, the ink appears to be still perfectly wet and usable. Alright, I'm gonna take some of those I'm gonna take some of those ink wells. A yeah. couple extra quills. If there's any usable parchment, uh, there's I'm still gonna take some of that as well. There's still some document uh, paper. If you go through each one of these, which I'll allow, um, you find the same in each. Uh, the only difference of all of the four or five chambers is the last one. Um, and the last one, there is a golden cross sitting out on the table, an uh, Atavian cross um, with uh, very fine looking garnets that are about the size of um, 
uh, half golf balls um, set in each one of the corners of the uh, cross. Uh, based on your just you know knowledgeable reasoning of it, that cross is probably worth 500 gold pieces on the open market. Um, but the ink wells appear to be um, basically ever filling. Like when you if you pour one out and then put it back up, you'll note that it fills back up with ink. Um, oh, that's going to come in handy. Not that's magical cool. ink. You can't use it for like. Oh, I know, but it's like oh shit! There's an invisible creature. Throw ink on it. Well, it's not gonna. <laughs> it's it's like a small amount, but yeah. I mean, sure, you could do that, but you have five of those ink pots, one cross worth five hundred gold pieces, and uh, as uh, I'd say, fifteen pieces of parchment, and then the white substance. Um, 250 gold pieces from the treasure chest. Uh, there are three eggs, the two holy symbols, and you left behind the miner's tools. Any other questions about this room? No. Um, the eggs don't do anything, I assume. Other than become tools when they gestate. Fine. I'll be their mother. They'll obey me. Uh, I'm, gonna t- I'm gonna swim back Okay. to the uh, other... Would this area go you, to another room? You weigh substantially more, so actually what you end up doing is realizing that swimming's probably a bad choice. You'd probably just take this small little passageway here and get back up onto the surface. It looks like it's a little bit okay. more uh, reasonable a path than just jumping is in the water. Other path? Is that other path? <laughs> I, I jump in and then I kind of like, oh shit. But um, is that other path straight down? Does that lead to another room? The tunnel in the wall? Uh, it, yeah. you, you assume it just leads into dark depths. Yes. But like, I, if, if I go through it as a character, it would lead to another... Do you, do you want to swim room. down that tunnel? No, if it leads to another room, I don't. I mean, it might, but you'd have to say that you're wanting to do that. Mm, no, I don't want to do that because I'm heavy now. Okay. So you guys gather your can things. See, What's up? Can I see the bird? Would it look like I could fit down the hole? Yeah, yeah the hole's big enough to fit a chool. Um, no problem. Um, it looks like it's a pretty massive hole. If you want to jump in the water and swim down the hole, you can. I'll give it a go. Alright, um, how long are you going to swim, um, down there before you decide to come back? Well, I think I'm about, I don't know how long I'm going to, my ability to hold my breath would be, so about half, what I think I'm about halfway in. Sure. Typically you can hold your breath for a number of minutes equal to your constitution modifier. Um, and one is the lowest that you could hold your breath. Um, I think it's halved if you have a negative modifier. But anyways, I don't think anybody here has a negative modifier on con, but if you want to swim down there for a bit, you swim for quite some time before realizing this is a dead end and you're just going deeper into water. And typically with downward descents into water, you're not going to find air pockets. You don't find any air pockets. You turn around and head back. Mm -hmm. What's that clanging noise? It's my wife cooking. Wow. When he bites the surface, he'll just also just go, should we head back and see if we can't get the, the... Wind, get the wind and wave and get the hell out of here? Okay. I'm quite done yeah. now. So you go to the red chamber and then you're back to the green chamber. Okay, do we want to put the vials in now? Guys? Yeah, let's make sure we... <laughs> Um, yeah, I have the blue vial, and so I want to put that in the uh, six-sided shape. You take the blue vial and put it in the six-sided shape, is that right? Yeah, is that, everyone cool with that? As you do so, it sets into place, you hear the locking, and you hear kind of a draining sound of liquid, and then nothing happens. Okay. So do I remove it from my inventory? Yeah, you'd remove the blue substance or azure substance from your inventory, correct? Okay. All right, then what happens? Um, I have a black vial as well, and I put that one in the eight side. No, 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 do, do the black vial last. Do the black vial last. Oh, okay. But I mean, shouldn't the sunburst one be last since it's in the middle? There is no eight-sided side, so the thing yeah. you said you were doing can't happen. Um, there also is no oh. hole in the central piece. There are a total of four receptacles four. for the substances. Uh, okay. So the white one goes in the triangle. Do you place the white one in the triangle? Because currently Fia has the white one. I don't have the white one, I'm just saying, as a statement. So we have 
four individuals and the one in the middle has two hands. So I imagine the one in the middle is actually going to receive two, which is probably going to be the black and the white. Yeah, I know. You just put one in each hand. No, the we were just in the white room and it had three pillars. Oh, okay. That that's fine. That works. Five. Do you put the white one into the triangle? Uh, um, hmm. Maybe. Wrong. <laughs> uh. Yeah. Okay. I'll go ahead and do that. Okay. You hear it lock into place, and then you hear a draining sound as the liquid is expelled from the container. Nothing happens. So then we have the well, red one. Part. Yeah, the red one, which is four. Would be the square. Oris has the red one. Oris, do you place the red substance into the hands of the square dwarf? No, I'm going to put it in the pentagon one. All right. No, I'm going to no. put it in the square. <laughs> oh. Okay, you set the red substance into it, um, the light kind of extinguishing as it enters the hands, and uh, you listen as it drains the liquid, uh, similarly to the others. All right. This leaves the uh, last being the five-sided one on the right. Who's got the green? I don't have the green one. Um, I think, I think Chad Davos has it. Davos has it. And if you guys are instructing him to place it, he will. Yeah. Okay. He places it, and the same thing happens. The second all four of the substances on the exterior sides are placed, you watch as the central treasure chest changes shape you see that out of the top of it comes a single hand um, held like this um, very much like the dwarves who are receiving items it looks like you could slide a substance into this one open hand that's now jutting out of the top of the uh, this uh, box do we go black or gold that's the question I, think it's the gold one. I would because the gold has a sunburst on it I'll preemptively then... rage and put the gold one in. <laughs> <laughs> just in case. So, real quick, I'm just going to make sure everyone's okay with this. Gold into the uh, weird hand um, coming out of the top of the treasure chest. Is that right? Yeah. Speak nope. now or forever hold your peace. All right. Kelder is exempt from this discussion. He had his chance. <laughs> <laughs> he slides the uh, gold substance in. The second it enters, all of the uh, symbols light up with their colors, and the sunbursts in each one of them shine gold. The symbols in the center also all shine the colors of the external ones with the centerpiece shining gold. The second that happens, they all fade away, and the chest opens with a bit of golden light coming out of it. Um, you hear a very familiar tune, which I can't play here because of copyright purposes. If you've ever played Legend of Zelda, it's very similar in kind to of that. Um, and inside you see two blades setting on kind of a, a golden um, colored uh, pillow. Uh, the two blades are set side by side and look identical in kind. And it looks like they have an attachment point at the base or pommel of each of the swords. You stare at Sueleth Palma, also known as the Wind and Wave. Or is he going to pick him up? Should we pick him up right now? Should we? All right. You pick up the blades? Yep. Okay. They feel really light in your hands. Uh, It's a pair of scimitars, effectively. Who picked them up? Oris. Oris picked them up. He's just holding them. That's fine. Yeah, they, they, they don't feel like they have a lot of weight to them. Like, uh, they just feel like a more um, stylish weapon rather than a brute I'll walk over and walk sitting there holding them. Um, I'm just going to kind of inspect them, see what kind of condition they're in. Perfect condition. The, the moment that he comes over, or is he going to shove the blades, not like into Kelda, but like pass into Kelda, and just be like, these are too pretty for me. You might as well carry them. You're the Kelda's kind of surprised that he just like just like aggressively shoves these things towards him. He's like, ah! And he's like, oh, okay. And then he very carefully, you know, takes them from him. Okay. At this point, all will come out his rage. Because he's still angry because he was ready for a fight. <laughs> um, as you take a hold of the two weapons, you kind of feel a strange kind of uh, sensation come over you, Kelder. Like, you feel like a warmth over your skin. Um, and you can kind of feel like the uh, a strange ocean breeze pass over you you're looking over them and you kind of 
you know, just instinctually and almost perfectly, um, still a little new to it, but connectively, you place the two pommels together and the weapon forms a longbow. Whoa. I'm pretty impressed by that, and I, I do... I just I draw I, I I just do a draw on the bow like no arrow but I just I, I test it out. There doesn't appear to be a line when you first reach for it, but as you're reaching for it, you see a cord just like s- snap from one end of the weapon to the other, almost as if it's prepared for you to take the draw of the um, uh, the weapon. You take a draw of it, and it pulls like some of the finest elvish bows you've ever touched. I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> I think we just leave. <laughs> Bye. I, I mean, there is a lot more to explore, but we've gotten a pretty far already. Yeah, it was. Yeah. We've got what we came for. We've gotten a fair amount of loot. I'm nearly dead. Yeah. I've got one rage left. Yeah, that was record time. Let's not. Uh, it's, it's like you woke up two hours ago and you already want to go back to sleep. Yep. He nearly got ripped in half. I think this is fine for Oris to want to sleep. So, uh, you, you know, test the weight of it, test the strength of it. It's a perfect bow. And when it's com- uh, disconnected, a uh, perfect pair of scimitars. Mm. Lovely. I'm definitely going to be checking this out. It also, I, don't, I don't have the components for identify yet, do I? Um, you cast. Oh, you you don't have um. A tomb. It means that uh, you're magically connected to the weapon. Oh. You can only. Have, well, I don't have the components for identify, right? If you don't have a hundred gold piece pearl, then no. Uh, I think we got the money now. I can probably buy one when we get back to town. Sure. Yeah, Ooh, crazy. that's a good-looking bow. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, you guys head back out that way. Um, still holding on to the black substance, or what are you doing with it? Let's keep it. Let's keep it as a souvenir. It might turn one of us into venom. <laughs> All right. You okay. Pass, you pass through the black chamber, uh, see the dead curator laying on the ground where you left him, moving past him. Party. You move to the golden chamber, see the uh, strange, um, inky, dead teenagers laying dead on the ground, kind of darkness-infused. Uh, you move through the blue hall where you see the white uh, laying dead on the ground where you killed him and took the blue substance from him. And lastly, you move into, well, not lastly, but uh, towards the narrative of this purpose, you move into the blue chamber. You stop to find the well where Pleasant was summoned from and also where you found the black substance in the weird gear mechanisms that now more strangely resemble doors to you as you look at them. Some sort of gear work doors. Do we risk a, a glance? Based Let's on, check it out. Uh, based on Is what there you, like some sort of opening in these doors? No, they are not opening. Uh, basically, they look like Toblerones on the side of the wall, like I described before. Uh, oh, I got gotcha. you. Like large gear portions. When you um, uh, tossed uh, something into um, it um, initially, I forget what you tossed, but it caused the it like a torch. Yeah, a torch. A torch. It caused the mechanism to, to change a bit and drop out the uh, the black substance, which was hidden away inside of the mechanism. And then. Dropped a steel trap in there, nothing happened. And then strangely, a while later, the bird came out of it. Or appeared think... around it. Chuck in the black substance. Chuck it in? Chuck it in, I reckon. Okay. And hope is not important. Uh, I, I don't... Why would we do that? Because we found it here. This, the door business is... John's hinting at. Uh, like, if we found it here, it probably does something with this. I don't really know much about this room, but uh, if you guys want to do that, then yeah. We can do that. Worst case scenario, all of us will jump in to get it. <laughs> Just kill yourself. Okay. 
Do you toss the black substance in? Yeah, I guess. I think, Ch I think Chad's yeah, the one I have it, it. So. Chad's shaking his head no, yeah. like he doesn't want it to I have happen. It. Okay, pleasant. Do you toss it in? Uh, sure, yeah. I mean, if I, yeah, I don't... I'm it hits that it. 10 foot uh, down uh, point um, where it vanishes from light. Um, but you watch as it hits that point and drags the darkness down with it. Um, almost like it was hitting against um, like a, a fabric and pulling the fabric down. Um, as it continues to descend, it becomes completely dark within um, and you can no longer see it. But it looks like this well is now visually visible and no longer <laughs> blocked by um, like magical darkness. The second Ooh, okay. you kind of realize that, you hear a loud <laughs> sound as you watch as the mechanism that connects the doors drops it in sequence, making a loud <laughs> as it drops down, um, revealing two small alcoves, one to your left and one to your right. Um, on each one, there is something hanging from the wall. The one on the left, there is a large axe red in coloration that has been bound by chains to the wall. It looks like the chains have arcane glyphs that have been etched onto them um, in Elvish and also in Old Osirian. Very detailed, very nuanced, but very specific. And on the opposite side of it, you see that there is a gemstone that looks like it's in the shape of an eye um, that is sitting kind of a small alcove that looks like a hand holding it um, up. It looks like there's a hole in the axe, the central portion of the axe, where the gemstone might fit. Oh, I'm going to pick up the gemstone, look at it, look at the axe with the biggest smile on his face and start walking towards the axe on the end. Anybody stop I me? need a new axe. Kelder draws his rapier. Okay. I mean, I, I, I imagine I can't really use Wind in the Wave because I'm not attuned to it yet. You can. You can use it. It's still a sword. Okay, then yeah, I'm just gonna step back. I'm, I'm gonna put it back together and stand back with the bow. Okay. Um, you then hear a voice in your head, just kind of a strange voice in Elvish, say, No need. As you watch Oris take this gemstone over to the... Um, the axe. Anybody else want to try and stop him? You see, oh, Kelder. You also notice that Davos is having a momentary kind of uh, lapse in judgment too, where he's like he he raises his weapon and then is kind of looking down at the butcher's bride as this is happening. Kelder looks at him. He's like, uh, "Oh yeah, did yours talk to you as well?" What he says that he, he looks over at you. Pleasant or Fi, are you going to attempt to stop Oris from doing what he's doing? And I won't stop him. No, I can't really stop him. As you get within a little bit of a distance from the axe, there's a magnetism that seems to be pulling the axe against the chains towards the orb, and the orb looses from your hand and slams into the socket. Its eye-like nature changes to kind of a goldish color, and you see a small bit of a sunburst appear inside of that central portion. Um, yeah. Oh, it's going to grab the axe. Um, the axe is chained up. Yeah, and uh, you grab the axe, and as you do so, you watch as the chains start to break apart at seams, and it kind of pulls away from the wall. Oh, it's going to give it a test swing, yank it off the wall and give it a test swing. The second you kind of take it off the wall, um, Kelder, you kind of have this strange sensation kind of coming from the bow you're holding in your hand and you feel like it's, I don't know, it, it kind of feels like a satisfying feeling of locking uh, uh, the last piece of a puzzle into place, almost. Um, as, as it happens, you kind of just have this weird, strange sensation kind of come over you. As you take up the axe, this great red axe, um, everyone kind of looks at it strangely. Um, and as you hold it, you um, realize it's 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 really quite heavy um, and really quite nice. And you start hearing like your own thoughts coming into your head in a different language, but it's your own voice. And you're hearing yourself speaking to yourself in Draconic. <laughs> Congratulations, you've acquired Soul Edge. <laughs> Wait, what? Your voice in your head now is coming into your head 
in draconic, but you can understand yourself. Your mono, your inner monologue. Your inner monologue changed. <laughs> your inner Testing. monologue changed to draconic, but you can understand draconic. Testing the theory, I'm gonna turn to Bargo and call him a knobhead in draconic. He says, and then just in draconic, he says, "Fuck you." <laughs> oh, if he's just looking at the axe and and, he, and then he kind of looks at you again and goes, "You speak the tongue of Salond." Only now. Ah. And everyone else is just like, <laughs> as they're like, <laughs> 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 they're just grunting at each other. And like, there's like hisses and like loud, uh, just sharp tones. It's a very uh, guttural language, draconic. Um, but yeah, Oris, you can speak draconic and also the features that are on the weapon. Ooh. Is it plus one, plus two, great no, axe? Neither of that. You deal an additional no, two. Great. You do an additional two damage with weapon. There's no bonus to the attack roll, and then on a crit, you deal an additional twelve damage, in addition to the two. Ooh. All right. So, uh, Davos kind of looks to um, uh, everyone. Kind of sets the blade back at his belt and uh, looks to. Um, Kelder. We can just say it wasn't here. If you want to hide it. What, the axe? No. And he looks to the bow. And I'm holding the bow. You remember that in the initiation of this, he was um, uncertain about like keeping the bow and giving it to the Lord of the Old Guard because it was an item that belonged to the elves in the past. Right, right. And that's probably the sentiment I would express. It's basically like, we found the bow, but I'm not I'm not letting go of it. We can just say we didn't like, find it. It's yeah, but I just, I've only recently come into the, uh, the good graces of your organization and... I would not want to be uh, perceived as as uh, a thief or somebody less than trustworthy. We can play it however you want to. I'm just saying, if you want to, I understand, and I'm okay with not telling him about it. I mean, what, are we going to stash the weapon somewhere? I mean, if I walk in with these scimitars, he's going to know what it is. Not if you are keeping them, you know, under your cloak or something and just hide them. Do you think this is what we should do? Uh, I'm telling you whatever play you want to go for is fine by me. <laughs> Very well. All right. You guys walk back up the stairs, um, back up into the main chamber, which we haven't been to in a long time, and uh, you've never been to, Kate. <laughs> uh, you enter into a very long, old, dusty, kind of just uh, kind of covered with like growing um, grass, actually, on the stone, um, which we discovered in the past was um, uh, crypt grass and um, or grave grass. And uh, you see that there's a symbol etched in the ground that's similar to the cross that was picked up earlier, remembering uh, that the only place that was explored in this chamber was the main hall. Uh, there is still an alcove that goes over here, and there's an alcove that goes over here, and there's an alcove that goes over here. Do we want to keep exploring, guys? And then there's a staircase over this way that goes back up to the surface. Are we set on leaving? Do I need to attune to this weapon? It's attuned to you already. Oh. Yeah, same with the axe? Correct. Ooh. I, I say we leave just in case. I don't want to fight King Chiffic. I mean, we could... can... or how much health do you have? Nine. Okay, yeah. Um, I've also got one rage. So there's just these weird little alcoves that were never inspected that could... Are they are they just alcoves or do they... Yeah, have... they're just little alcoves. You want to check it out? Oh, well, let's 
Yeah, then let's just check them out. Yeah, you go into that alcove. There's three treasure chests sitting in small, like, nuanced areas. Do you <laughs> open up one of them? Because they're not locked. Oh, one of them's going to be a mimic. The one of going to be a mimic. Like, detect magic or something on these real quick? I mean, Will you can. I can just simplify it for you because it's hilarious that they pass by this without checking it out. The one to the north of you has three potions inside of it. They look like they're potions of healing. <laughs> the one to the uh, south looks like it has a single potion in it. It looks like it's a potion of invisibility. The one to the far side, nice. the chest there, it looks like it has a perfectly made, beautiful looking cloak inside of it. It appears to be okay. a cloak of protection. I wasn't part of this, so... <laughs> no, they Can just... take the cloak, please? What? Please, may I have the cloak? Good job, guys. Um, for what it's worth, I I would express an interest in that cloak of protection. The only reason I asked for it is that gives a plus one to AC, doesn't it? Sure. What is AC? Armor class. I don't know what... Don't I'm know. trying to remember what a cloak of protection does. Plus one armor it's... class, plus one to all saving throws. I'm all, I am. I've, I've got to be the tank. Potions so. and drink them. Potions heal people. You can save them for now, or you can drink them now and waste them. Your call. They would have been great to yeah, have. I mean, like, um, I, I didn't know if there was more exploring. Like, sure. Like these are just alcoves. Yeah, that's that alcove there. Then there's the alcoves to the north, which actually have a bit more um, uh, of a nuanced kind of material inside. There are a total of six chests in the passageway to the north, and small little honorific alcoves um, and each one of them is a sword um, the swords in these are not magical they just look like they are of historical providence and probably importance to the old guard as they are uh, a tavian uh, pelagic arbiter honor guard swords um, it looks like they are kind of set uh, with citrines all about the hilt very ornate very beautiful Probably worth something money-wise if you wanted to flip them, but might be hard to do on the open market. And then in terms of the old guard, well, the old guard will take them again, as um, you know they we sent. Try. They sent you. <laughs> they sent you down. You're a part of the old guard, you nerd. Um, and then there are two treasure chests finally in the um, alcove all the way across the way there. Um, in in that one, you find a pair of slippers um, or boots, uh, effectively. And then in the other one, you find a uh, circlet. Oh, can I see? I want the circlet. Alright. Find the circlet, kill the boots, or is the cloak. And we'll give the little bird person to my Azorite. Everything else, since she's already taken it anyway. Oh, I <laughs> wanted that cloak. I need that extra AC, buddy. So do I! I thought we were going to give that to, to Kelder. Uh, my, my reasoning is I'm already going to be. If my AC is higher, I can reckless more often and hit more often and get hit less. I mean, you make a good argument. What else did we find? Lots of potions? You can have this plate armor and we can go trade it for the best armor you can get. Because plate armor is expensive as hell. It's heavy, isn't it? Yeah, it's about 50 or 60 pounds. All right. Do you guys go back up? Or you can, or you can have the cloak, but you need to pay for me to get this plate armor turned to half plate. And that'll be what, 150 gold? Yeah, half the cost of half plate, or one fifth the cost of half plate. Sorry. Um. Hold on one second. Uh. So that'd be one fifth the cost would be yeah 150. Yeah. We can do that. All right. If you go back up, the second you guys reconvene outside of the uh, the, the, the place, you notice that uh, Kolgar kind of walks over to you. Um, Pleasant, you've never met this individual, but there's a dwarf with a bald head, uh, bright white beard, uh, holding a very jagged-looking sword, kind of looks over at you, um, uh, looks to Davos, kind of uh, says, found a new friend. And Davos kind of nods. we got to make it back. We found some items of importance. <laughs> you see as Oris holds like a bundle of long swords. Um, make sure they get back to the guard. Nods his head. Um, Pleasant, you realize that there are eyes on you and you just feel kind of weird. You kind of look over to this large shrine that's out um, near where you're at. You're exiting out of a, uh, a grave, basically. Mm -hmm. And just, you know, in the direction of where you were just underneath, there's a large statue 
um, and kind of positioned up on the, the base of that statue um, is a, a human woman with blonde hair and a green cloak over her head, and she has a very massive looking crossbow trained on you. Um, <laughs> and uh, everyone kind of goes, no, it's fine, it's Celia, don't worry about it. Um, and you and the group kind of gather together um, and head back towards the, uh, the manse of the old guard. Um, any stops along the way, or do you guys want to like take a break out here in the open field and maybe take a short rest at least to get ready to get you um, know, prepared just in case something happens? Yeah, let's take a short rest. I reckon maybe feed all of us some some healing potions. Um, you can take a short rest and spend your hit dice as you please. That's perfectly fine. Should we do that? Yeah, take an hour and relax and then head back that way. Okay. What did you say? Spend your what? Uh, hit dice. So when you take a short rest, you can actually kind of heal up, kind of get a little bit of a second wind in you. Yeah, you can spend hit dice. You'll see that there's a section that says hit dice, and you should have 4d8, I think. Oh, if you click on that, you can spend one per click, I think, and you can spend oh. up a total of four. I do not want to do that. Okay. Yeah, you don't need any healing. Mm -hmm. Oris, on the other hand... Um, Can I take a potion? I'm still not at full. <laughs> I mean, you're close. Oh, en I, I think you're close enough to, ex you know, save the fifty gold pieces. True. But that said, any other things that you guys want to do during the short rest? Let's get cold and attuned to that cloak, the bastard. If not, what did I take when I was in the? Yeah, attuned to that cloak, yeah. indeed. To, who's attuning to the boots? Oh, take the boots. You're just gonna take all the items. Uh, I'm, gonna wait for, I'm gonna wait for somebody else to say if they're gonna take the boots instead of you, Mr. Greedy Face. I've not got anything. Does anybody? I got the axe. He said you can attune to the cloak. What? What? Are no, Keldon's got the cloak. Oh, okay. Then yeah, I have the cloak. Well, you wouldn't know with this because you can't identify them. You don't have a means of doing so unless you attune to them. Oh. So. They look like they're fine-looking elvish slippers, basically. Can I have them? Does anybody else want them? If they are what I think they are, they should probably go to the bird. Can you, like... Can it, Since he's, they're magical, can they, like, sense anything on it? I can, I can identify them, which will be able to tell you everything... everything about them. But in order to do that, we need to go back to town. I need to buy a pearl that's worth uh, 100 gold pieces. Can I just, and if I just take them and, and attune them or whatever, I'll know what they do. Yeah, and if they're cursed or something oh. like that, you get cursed, um, or something to that effect. So if you're willing, you willing yeah, to risk it? To it. Yeah. Okay. If she puts on the boots, she'll find out that they are boots of elven kind. Awesome. Sweet. What does that do? Uh, boots of elven kind increase, uh, hold on a second here. Always getting shafted. You got a you got a new uh, axe, dude. I'm the last person to get one of the cool fancy magic items. Now I'm gonna be the last person to get cool fancy magic gear. Boots of Elven kind uh, mean that you make no sound when you step while wearing them. Uh, you have advantage on dexterity stealth checks that rely on moving silently. So if you're trying to sneak up on someone who's not looking at you, you would have advantage on your sneaky sneak sneak. Do I need to do something to? Uh... No. Oh, okay. Just write it in your uh, notes. They weigh a pound. Okay. Um. Okay. Let's see. Um. And then the circlet. Phi, you put the circlet on, and are you attuning to it as well? Stephanie. How do I actually do that? Because I've been trying to figure it out. Oh no no no! There's no mechanical method to do it. You just say that you're doing it. Okay. You basically just spend an hour hanging out with the item. Correct. I'll do that. So it's actually considered a headband, not a circlet. Um, it's a headband <laughs> of intellect. If you are wearing the item, you have an intelligence of 19. Ooh. You're as smart as me now. Yay! <laughs> the elves are the smart ones. Victorious. Now, clearly this means you should be a wizard now. 
So for the stats, what does the top number versus the bottom number mean? What do you mean? Oh, um, modifier versus score. Oh, okay. So yeah, your modifier is what you add to your dice. Your score is what you is basically the hard number, the foundational okay. number for it. Okay. Yep. Um, boo, 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 boo. Um, all right. And Davos doesn't get anything. Um, <laughs> sad. Of course, just have conversations with. You can give him the. Uh, you can give him that plus one longsword. Yeah. But we walked out with like a lot of pricey shit. Like we're going to be getting a lot of. Well, it's going to be passing a lot of the uh, swords and such over to the old guard. So, but yeah. Well, um, no, we had the plus one magical longsword. Oh, I know, but um, Oris had that. If he wants to relinquish it, he can. I might set. I, I might keep it so that I can still use a shield every now and again because I can't now. Got the great axe. Mm. Let's see all these fun great axes that I can use one-handed. So anyway, um, you can't wield that axe one-handed. <laughs> um, not at all. Um, I get about a soldier strike thing, could I? <laughs> uh, um, it weighs a good 10, 15 pounds. Um, Damn. Yeah, size-wise, it's a lot bigger than you're probably thinking. Um, when someone said that it was Soul Edge, they were pretty close, like size comparison-wise. Um, but anyways, as you make your way back to the manse, what you realize is, is it looks like there's smoke coming from the noble district. Uh, you hear the clangor of um, bells, which you would know as basically the fire brigade. Um, and as you approach, you realize that the smoke is actually coming from the lord's house. It looks like his mansion is up in flames. Immediately, Davos and the two that came with him start running in that direction trying to find out what's going on. What would the rest of you like to do? Uh, i take off with them. i follow close after Davos. Okay. Five. Axe in hand, run. Go figure out what's going on. Oris. Axe in hand, running the opposite direction. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll follow. Okay. And uh, Pleasant, it looks like they're in a city that's very unfamiliar to you, walking you towards a um, house that's burning, and now they're running towards it. Oh, yeah. Okay. As you get close, well, as you get closer, <laughs> you see that there is fire uh, brigade present. Uh, looks like people who are uh, attempting to kind of quell the water with buckets and uh, the like. But you also notice that there are conglomerate mages who are using more magical means to try and stop the fire. Mm -hmm. All right. So yeah, I'm gonna start using prestidigitation to put these fires out. Kelder, you also notice something very strange. It looks like there's a, an enforcer who you recognize as Enforcer 112, um, who is um, basically uh, an arm of the, the magistrate, um, the magical magistrate, who um, is very keen on finding renegades um, and people who defy um, conglomerate rule. And he's standing there talking to someone who you recognize immediately. He's talking to Copperhead. Oh, that motherfucker. And that's where we'll end the session for this week. <laughs> okay, that completely changed how I was. Who is what that? My next was gonna be. Stoner's old character. The, the person you replaced. Um, his character is. Oh, Chris, I'm not happy with him. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching the stream. We'll go ahead and stop it here and we'll pick it up next week.